How's it going, guys? Past level question for endocrine step one, internal medicine 2CK, 42 year old man, five month history of fatigue, blood pressure 100 over 70. Physical exam shows darkening of the skin, the forearms. Ferritin is normal, should be 25 to 300. You need to know that 300 or greater is hemochromatosis on US simile, 29 out of 30 questions. So you say, well, I don't know the normal ranges. Well, if you know it's not high, okay, because you know it's not 300 or greater, it's not high, it's clearly not a low number. Okay, because if they give it to you low in questions, they'll give it to you like 18, okay, iron deficiency anemia, all right, so 25 to 300 normal. So the reason I do that is because this is not darkening of the skin, this is due to hemosiderin from hereditary hemochromatosis. This is Addison disease, all right, so it's a past level diagnosis straight up. And so we say, okay, well, which of these answers would we expect in Addison disease? Let's just hop through. So, and of course, if you ask what is Addison disease, that's going to be autoimmune destruction of the adrenal cortex, where we have decreased production of both aldosterone and cortisol. Decreased androgen production is not something that I've ever seen assessed on USMLE in terms of the uh, zona reticularis producing DHA, estrogen, dion, probably because peripherally we still see uh, significant quantities, although I still haven't seen anything about DHAS. But the point is, the lower blood pressure is not just due to the low aldosterone, where you have decreased fluid absorption distally in the kidney, but it's also from the low cortisol, okay? Because cortisol is going to upregulate alpha-1 receptors on peripheral arterials, which allows norepinephrine, uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine, the catecholamines, to bind, agonize, and do their job of constricting. So uh, what are we going to expect for Addison? Let's just hop through choice A, increased proton, urinary proton secretion, wrong fucking answer, because as we know, aldosterone will normally increase proton ATPase pump across the activity across the apical membrane of the cortical collecting duct. So it increases proton secretion into the urine. So if we have decreased aldosterone, you would have decreased urinary proton secretion. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, increased urinary sodium reabsorption, wrong fucking answer. And we know it's wrong because aldosterone normally functions to reabsorb sodium. And if aldosterone's low, then we'd have decreased reabsorption of sodium. Okay, so aldosterone is going to upregulate the sodium potassium ATPase pump in the basolateral membrane of the cortical collecting duct, which per one ATP utilized will reabsorb three sodium and secrete two potassium. So wrong fucking answer. Choice C. Essentially what I was going to mention, I mean, because we can do a lengthy discussion on all this stuff, but if we're reabsorbing sodium from the inside of the cortical collecting duct cell into the blood, we're going to decrease intracellular sodium, which is going to favor slash create a high to low gradient of sodium from the urine into the cell. We then have increased activation of ENAC on the optical membrane, which allows that sodium to be reabsorbed from the urine into the cell. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, serum potassium 3.3, wrong fucking answer. So potassium normally 3.5 to 5 in Addison disease because we have decreased potassium secretion distally, we'd have increased potassium, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, serum sodium 140, normal range 135 to 145. Correct answer. Now, some of you are going to get very emotional right now. There's two ways to address this question, okay? The first way is we can eliminate to get there. So you clearly know that in Addison disease, we're going to have a metabolic acidosis, not alkalosis, normal range for bicarbonate, 22 to 28. So you say, if anything, we'd have decreased serum bicarbonate. So you say it's impossible bicarbonate's elevated. It's, it's impossible we have hypokalemia. It's impossible we have increased proton secretion, sodium reabsorption. So we eliminate to get there. Okay, that's one way. And then you say, D is fucking weird. Why is sodium in the normal range? I don't know. But that's one way to get there. The second way to answer this question is you say, well, I've gone through Melman's content. I've done his PDFs. I've seen his other YouTube clips. And he's harped on this. He's inculcated that sodium can be normal in aldosterone derangement. Holy shit. Okay, I'd say about a third of USMLE questions, step one, step two, sodium will be in the normal range. And that confuses students. They're bemused initially because they're like, why is sodium normal? We have good sodium regulation. 
it's probably due to flux in ADH, antidiuretic hormone is one mechanism. Okay, so I would say probably a third of questions you'll get with aldosterone derangement, sodium will be in the normal range. Okay, whether it's high or low aldosterone doesn't matter. I would say probably four out of five questions, you're going to have bicarbonate in the direction you expect. Occasionally, one out of five questions, especially in 2 scalable, bicarbonate can be normal. That can also confuse students, all right? And then potassium is the one that pretty much like 14 out of 15 questions will be the direction you expect. It's going to be potassium that is the most telling as per my observation across NBME followed by bicarb. And then sodium can often be in the normal range, okay? So if we had Addison disease and we expect decreased sodium reabsorption, if we have classic derangement, we'd have decreased serum sodium, right? But not dramatic. Sodium can be in the normal range for Addison disease as well as Consonerm if we had increased aldosterone. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.